Hey guys, I'm back with Skelly here. Uh, this video is going to be on glute squeeze and pelvic uh, torque in, in like squatting and deadlifting and hip thrusting movements. So I guess it's also on the lumbo-pelvic hip complex biomechanics. So if you look here, there's Skelly. This is the lumbar spine. This here is the pelvis. This is the SI joint. And this is, these are the hips. So this all works together, this whole region kind of functions uh, and, and coordinates together and there's a, a, an optimal manner in which it coordinates during movement to produce the best results. So uh, if, if you're in the bottom of a squat, you don't want to go into, you don't want to butt wing, you don't want to go this way. You don't want the pelvis to rotate this way. You don't want the lumbar spine to flatten out. And so, you, in order to keep this nice, stable position here like this, the erectors have to fire very hard to hold that anterior pelvic tilt. So, it's creating, there might not be any pelvic motion as you come down. You might not have a lot of motion there, but the torque is created, the rotational force to hold that in place. So you will, the erectors will help, the, the hip flexors do it too, but in the squat it's mainly the erectors creating the anterior pelvic tilt torque. Now, the top of a squat is pretty unloaded, it's not very hard, so you don't have to like squeeze the glutes hard to lock out a squat because the top half is so easy. But in a deadlift, when you get to the top of a deadlift, you will see that you want, you don't want to achieve a lockout by just bending the back this way and hyperextending the lumbar spine. You want to achieve a lockout as you come up like this. You want a strong glute squeeze to push the hips forward. Rather than thinking of the lumbar spine twerking backwards, think of the glutes pushing the hips forward. Now, here's what I want to show you. Let's see if you can zoom in on my glute region. If I squeeze the glutes as hard as I can from a, from a standing position, just like this, you will notice my pelvis posterior tilts a little bit. And I also, if, if I'm standing like this, my feet, if I squeeze my glutes really hard, I will notice that my feet start to turn out a little bit. What this means is just squeezing my glutes creates hip, hip external rotation torque and posterior pelvic tilt torque. Because if you can see from here, you know, I'm in neutral, and then I squeeze my glutes and it tucks under a little bit. Now, when you lock out a deadlift, you just want to squeeze the glutes. So here's my lumbar spine. If I squeeze the glutes hard, my lumbar spine is not affected. So this is when I, when we talk about an American deadlift, where you're squeezing the glutes, my lumbar spine does not move out of position. You never come up like this and then go and move your, and flex your lumbar spine. So it's very important to understand that. The same thing applies for kettlebell swings. When you're in the bottom of a kettlebell swing, or let's talk about a deadlift, when I'm in the bottom of a deadlift, okay, I want, you know, it's like our natural tendency to be rounded over. But when I create a nice stable arch, what am I doing? I do this and create an arch, okay? I am using the erectors to get the spine in neutral and to keep the pelvis, to stabilize the pelvis. So I'm stabilizing both the lumbar spine and the pelvis. Those work together, they're connected. And so right here, I'm creating anterior pelvic tilt torque, but then as I come up, right here, but right here is when I switch. Now I want the glute squeeze. Glute squeeze there. So if you see, my glutes are on right now. A lot of people, you will see them at the top of a deadlift or a kettlebell swing, and their glutes aren't turned on. They're just kind of using their erectors and hamstrings and things like that, and they shut their glutes off. You want to practice squeezing the glutes hard to lock it out. 
because that actually protects the lumbar spine. So, again, if we look at Skelly here, if from right here, coming up, instead of the lumbar spine hyper extending rearward, the glutes push forward like this, and there's going to be some slight posterior pelvic tilt torque right here, just like that with the glute squeeze. But it's this very stable position because you're squeezing the glutes. The lumbar spine does not tuck. You don't lose that lumbar spine position. It's just a glute squeeze. You're not thinking lumbar spine at all. You're just thinking of a strong glute, glute contraction. And this glute contraction is what keeps everything stable. So I did a little experiment where I had around 10 strong lifters, power lifters and really strong guys. And I told him to do this. I said, first I want you to not squeeze your glutes at all, and I want you to bend backwards as far as you can, and really focus on hyperextending the lumbar spine. And I had him do that, and they get to here, and every one of them would say, oh, that hurts, you know, I get pain. And then I said, okay, now squeeze your glutes, and go back, keep your glutes squeezed, and bend back, and most of them reported to me that they didn't have, they didn't feel any pain when their glutes were squeezed. So squeezing the glutes helps protect the spine. It helps protect the spine when you round, it helps protect the spine when you hyperextend, but it's kind of this, the glue that holds everything together. So when I squeeze the glutes, again, you get this nice stable, stable contraction where it's twisting outwards on the hips and tugging the pelvis under, so you're not going to lose that. It's a very stable hip position, so make sure that when you lock out a deadlift and at the top of a kettlebell swing, so when I do a kettlebell swing and I'm at the top, when you see this, when, when the bell is floating up, my glutes are turned on. When the bell floats up and then the bell starts coming down, I wait till about here till I release them and go back down. So hold that glute contraction, and that's important because when the bell floats outwards, there's this period if the glutes aren't turned on, where the bell pulls away from you, and this creates some shearing force on the lumbar spine, meaning the bell is swinging out this way. Okay, so you've got the kettlebell swinging out this way, and if the glutes aren't turned on this pulls this way on the spine. You get this shearing force, splitting apart force, but if the glutes are turned on, it's gonna help stabilize this area too. So that's why it's important. So again, this also applies to a hip thrust when you are, so come back around this way. When you do a hip thrust, at the very top, if, if you're going to have a lot of shear force if you are, if your spine is hyperextended, but if you keep the torso flat like this, and then just push the glutes upwards, and this torso remains flat, you're going to greatly reduce the stress on the low back. So just from here, come up like that. So from here, see that? As opposed to this, hyperextended where I'm going to have more shear force because my glutes aren't going to be turned on as well. So make sure that when you come up to the top of a hip thrust, you're pushing the hips upwards with the glutes, okay, and make sure there's a strong glute contraction at the very top of the movement. So, <clears throat> you want to recap. At the top of a deadlift, the top of a kettlebell swing, and the top of a hip thrust, you want a strong glute contraction characterized by posterior pelvic tilt torque, hip extension torque, and hip external rotation torque. Now, you don't want any lumbar spine motion though, so it's just a glute squeeze without affecting the lumbar spine. So if you have to practice and make sure, you know, like we do the American deadlifts, where you come down to here and squeeze the glutes, my lumbar spine does not change position here. I'm just squeezing the glutes. It's not movement at the lumbar spine. 
And one last thing I want to show you is that <coughs> posterior pelvic tilt and hip extension are basically very similar. They mimic each other. So as you come up into hip extension, I'm right here. I'm not quite at terminal hip extension. If I squeeze the glutes to go into hip extension, what happens? The hip extends. So this is, here's the head of the femur inside the acetabulum. If I squeeze the glutes, the hip extends. But if the femur stays fixed and I squeeze the glutes and this doesn't move, you will post your pelvic tilt, which does this. Which the pelvis tucks under like that. It's the same thing. They both kind of create hip hyperextension. So here might be like where hip extension reaches neutral, you get that extra glute squeeze. If it's hip hyperextension, the femur moves rearward. If it's posterior pelvic tilt, the femur stays put and the pelvis tilts upon the femur, but they both create that twisting torque in there to keep everything stable. And you also create, it creates a strong glute because the glute fibers run this way, it will twist outwards like this. So you'll get this twisting out external rotation force as well, which kind of just squeezing the glutes kind of screws your feet into place. So you don't have to think of screwing your feet in the ground, you just think of the glute squeeze and it takes care of it for you, but it's a very stable contraction. So anyway, I hope you liked the video on lumbo pelvic hip complex biomechanics. Thank you very much for watching.